We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. And welcome back to Tip of the Week, Building the Afforda Plane. What a special time. This week we're going to finish this seat. Nothing like the time comes when building that you can sit in your own aircraft, even though it's not quite ready to fly. From that point on, you will know that the time is coming when it will. So let's get started and finish this. Now it's time to consider seats for our afforded plane. Our first goal is to make sure it is light. There's lots of seats out there and some of them are great, but boy, they can get heavy. This one I found is a candidate, a good candidate, certainly not the only one, but it weighs five pounds. I, I weighed it. I think the manufacturer said it was four and a half. It, it came closer to five on my scale. It is made out of fiberglass. You can see how it was laid up. Lots of layers in here. It is nice and wide and has a nice reclined back here. A very flat bottom and very nice quality gel coat on the outside. So this is pretty much ready to use. Um, this was created by the people who sell the Aerolite Ultralight and I believe they make these as replacement parts for I think in this case it was the Quicksilver aircraft but wider than the factory one. So uh, it was a little bit pricey but we're going to try it and, and see what it's like. Now obviously when you go to fly you could load this up with memory foam cushion to whatever degree you want but certainly for the structure of the seat this seems like it's going to do an adequate job it is nice and strong I'm you know very impressed uh, of course that's the way things go with fiberglass like that it is an amazingly strong and light material uh, so this is going to be easy to mount with the flat bottom this can go directly onto the tube now, if you want to change the attitude of the seat, you can do that with some brackets. I think I find that it's going to be just fine going flat because of the uh, pretty strong uh, recline that's built into it. So let's go see how this fits onto the airframe. And remember, uh, fuel tank will be behind, so that will be the limiting factor as far as how back how far we're back it can go. Now I'm going to leave the gas tank in place because that's going to affect how this fits. I'm simply going to put this right on the tube centered and I will leave a few inches in between in case we get a different tank or in case we need to remove it, so a few inches there. Up at the front, that leaves approximately three, two and a half, three inches from the back edge of the cross tube. And with this sitting flat, I guess time will tell, but it looks about a good location for it. For mounting the seat, I'm going to use a one and a half by one and a half by four inches long extruded angle eighth inch thickness there's a pair of them here at the front of the seat now this will go flush with the top and the edge I'm going to place two three sixteenths rivets into the side same with the other side and then another two of these towards the rear of the seat. So I'm going to measure the seat so I get the placement in exactly the right spot. And that way then the seat can mount with bolts into each of these brackets. 
Uh, here's the seat bottom and the flat area here. It's just about a foot across, about 13 inches. So these brackets are going to go something like this, centered from side to side, and then our two inch tube will be in the middle. So I'm going to place a pair here and place a pair here. So I will measure the distance from here to here. Like this. So that I can put these on the tube in their proper location. I've taken the two angles and clamped them to a piece going across for the purpose of making sure that they're nice and flat across the top while drilling. So I've created two pilot holes in the sides of the clamps so I will carefully drill through. I have a line marked so these are positioned correctly for the seat. I'll go ahead and drill and clico on both of these. I will open up my two holes to 3 16 and rivet with 3 16 stainless steel rivets. And here's our four pads in place, two rivets in each one and nice and flat. And the idea here is that our seat will sit like this and then we'll have one bolt in each of the pads attached to the seat. Now what we're going to do first is locate a hole. I'm going to drill a 1 8 hole in the center of each of these and then I'll put the seat on and poke up from the bottom and back drill the hole into the seat. Okay, I'm going to put the seat in place carefully and then using these four holes drill upwards and put a hole into the seat. Now after having drilled up through the bottom I will replace these or up drill them rather with 3 16 size holes for small bolts. I am using an AN3 bolt with a large washer on it to hold that seat down. And a nut and washer on the bottom. Now I was not happy with the rigidity of the seat from left to right we almost could have guessed that I suppose so I have created two of these metal pieces now this I made from our 2 by 2 a scrap piece of our 2 by 2 square metal box that we used for the fuselage and I simply cut it half inch right down the middle and that was very easy to do with the bandsaw just drew a straight line and and fed it through and the idea is that this will be centered and bolted down and this will provide a nice flat surface very rigid and strong and I'll have a second one up here and then the seat will bolt to that. Two of these do add another pound to the seat so we should take note of that if it ever becomes an issue. Now since the holes in the seat were already drilled, it was not a big deal to find the center and mark where the hole should be and slide it under and mark exactly where the holes are located. So that way it will be easy to drill this and we'll have the bolt go all the way through. And then I'll add another bolt hole here and here so that our seat picks up support on the outer edges. 
Now I'll drill another set of holes towards each end and bolt that to the seat for the additional strength. Then I can pull these four off and set the whole seat down onto the frame and it should all bolt up very nicely. Now that is rock solid. Of course, if I end up needing a pound back later, I'll know where to get it. There are three areas that we need to reinforce our square fuselage to. One is at the front wing attach. That's where the bolt for the wing forward spar is going to locate. And then at the rear, same thing. We need to reinforce this section here. And then the other place is at the engine mount. and that would be this section here. So what we need to do is insert a durable material inside so that it cannot be crushed either through the weight or in the case of the wing, the heavy lifting and reinforce the structure around that area. Also, when we have the end of a tube like this, it is weaker as opposed to somewhere in the center. Reinforcement can be done a number of ways using a number of materials. The easiest is going to be to pack the square tube with a dense material. Now you certainly could use wood. The wood would have to be strong and then also sealed with, for example, a polyurethane or epoxy to keep moisture out so it doesn't swell or rot. Now what I'm going to use is this polyethylene plastic. Uh, this comes in a size that is just right for the inside of our 2x2. Two two. In other words, this is basically a nominal size of 1 and 3 quarters. The other quarters being taken up by the walls of the uh, metallic tubing, the aluminum tubing that we're using. Uh, I also had to shave down the side a little bit with a table saw to make sure it slipped in easy enough because it was a rather tight fit as it came from the factory. Uh, this is just one suggestion. It's not necessarily ideal. It, it weighs a little over a pound a foot, so that's another consideration. Uh, it is certainly not going to rot and extremely strong, so it will serve its purpose, but it's certainly not the lightest way to go. Uh, this is easily cut. We don't want to make it any longer than it has to be. And obviously our bolts are going to have to go through. So let's take this up to the fuselage and uh, see how it fits inside the tubing. In the case of the engine mount, so the four bolts were removed. Remember, that's why we put temporary nuts on those through bolts. And this will insert Now, what I want to do is measure about an inch past the bolt. I don't need to go any further than that and mark it and uh, cut it off. Installation is straightforward if you haven't made it too tight.
And now all we're going to do is run our drill in about three quarters of the way and then take it through the other direction and the bolt should go right in. We'll go to the other side. And then clean it out a little bit. All the way through and we will don't go too far now that's an accomplishment you're in your own plane making engine noises but we're well on our way to getting everything finished up. We have some tail feathers to contend with. So let's start thinking about that next time. And the only way that's going to happen is if we all get back to building.